Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoevers. Today is the seventh day of December 2019. God bless you. Uh, again, concerning uh, scriptures, this is part two of why God, uh, Psalm 114, says, uh, uh, man has said that there is no God. Only a fool has said there's a, in his heart, there is no God. Um, again, uh, we're going into getting into this uh, chapter 14 of the book of Psalms. Hopefully you in, it, this might be encourage you uh, like it's encouraged you. Uh, some are saying, hey, there's no such thing as Jehovah. There's no such thing as God. But here what the Bible says they have said in their heart. I have my own idea of a religion. Don't bother me with the Bible. I mean, that's what happens today, guys, when people don't want to hear it. They like their tradition. They like the, the they like the way they're comfortable. They're comfortable going to hell because they have not been born again. They haven't received the Lord and they haven't even searched the scriptures. They say, don't bother me with the Bible. Man is guilty in his inmost being as entertaining the wrong thoughts about God. Verse two, verse one says, "There, there are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good." The word translated "corrupt" is the same word used four times in the book of Genesis, chapter six, to describe the world Noah's day, a world so vile that God had to in, in basically flood the whole world in judgment. There are men whose works are vile even by human standards. A man who would take a little child and sexually abuse them, get them hooked on drugs, or pollute their little minds is not fit to live. Jesus said it would be best for a man if a millstone were being hung around his neck and he'd be cast into the depths of the sea. But there are people whose behavior is virtuous by human standards who are neither less pronounced corrupt by God plus corrupt by uh, humankind. You know, we, we, we think, okay, what's the worst thing you could do? Pedophile, um, you know, whatever. You know, whatever you think the worst sin is, God looks at us as uh, we have, we're corrupted. Uh, the Bible here, it says, hey, when I was a boy in school, our work was graduated on a numerical system. When he wrote an essay, the teacher would assign so many points out as possible, hundreds of compositions, so many for spelling, so many for handwriting, so many for originality, so many for grammar, so many for neatness, so many for factual accuracy. A perfect score was 100. Points are deducted for failure in each area being tested. Each student knew exactly where he stood when he received his mark. Usually the teacher would write some appropriate comment on the upper according to the grade, fair, weak, uh, very average, disgraceful. Only those who received a perfect score would have a comment, good, good job, you did a great job on your essay. Teachers in the United States often grade papers by letter rather than by number. This gives a lot more leeway. An A might be anything between 90 and 100, a B between 80 and 100, between uh, 70 and 80 is a C. The final year's grade might be averaged in such a way. Another system is called grading on the curve, in which the highest in the class receives an A and the lowest a failing mark, with the others where they fit rentally in between. This system often gives the underachieving students a better chance to pass. Well, God does not grade on the curve. God's standards are absolute. He has only two grades, good for absolute perfection and failure for anything else. What is, that is why he says there is none that does good that have all done abominable works. That's the case from the prosecutor to humankind and the prosecutor being you know god the holy spirit causes first witness and the lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that understood and seek god it was through the prosecutor says i need to call only one witness 
When he takes the stand, it will be enough. I shall rest my whole case on him. I am confident that once he takes the stand, all defense will crumble. I will not even need to cross-examine him. I draw the court's attention to two things about the witness. One, his person. The witness who corroborates God's charges against humanity is the Lord, that is Jehovah, the Jehovah of the Old Testament, and Jesus in the New Testament. The Lord looked down from heaven, his eye of omniscience, the eye of one who sees everything, nothing is hidden from him. All things are naked and open before the eyes of him, of whom, of whom we have to do. David said, the Lord looked down from heaven. He would say, the Lord came down from heaven. We know that the result of was men nailed him to the cross. So this awesome witness takes the stand, as it were, and all eyes are fixed upon him. He rests his hands upon the rail, and it is seen at once that those hands were pierced. The witness knows, therefore, he speaks when he's called upon to testify the guilt of man. What is God's perception? Well, God's perception is this. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men and to see if, there were, if anyone did understand or seek God Jehovah. An ordinary witness on the stand may deliberately lie, even under oath, or he might get confused under cross-examination. He may honestly mistake it in reporting what he saw. He might have seen only a part of what happened, and of course he cannot possibly know the motives of the hidden factors of this case. But this witness is infallible, the Lord is, in his perception. He has all attributes of deity. He is omnipresent, omnipotent, uh, omnipotent, all-powerful, knowing, and all-present. All he cannot be mistaken. He cannot lie. He cannot be intimidated. He knows every man, woman, and child. He knows every thought, word, and deed. He knows the time, when, the place, and where, and how everything that has ever happened. He knows the motive and the manner. He knows the intent, the impact, and the influence of everything we have ever thought or said or done. There never was a witness like this. Indeed, so dreadful, so awesome is the witness, and so convinced is everyone that the moment he speaks, it will be to expose completely every human heart. The case is not yet try even tried. There is no one to be said. The prosecutor rests his case. Now, what is the conclusion of the judge? Since no defense is possible, since it is obvious that man is guilty, the judge now gives his verdict. And terrible that verdict is. No wonder the average unregenerate man hates the Bible. But attacking the Bible because it tells the truth is like kicking the x-ray machine because the picture reveals an eternal cancer. The judge concludes that man is guilty on three counts. One, man is Man's total departure from God. The human race is guilty individually and conclusively. The race as a whole, the man as an individual, have turned away from God and his word. False religious systems, far from being expressions of man's desire to know God, are expressions of the, his departure from God. One of all, they slander his real care. Dr. William P. Smith says this, The well-known Bible's teacher and author once went into a drugstore. The man behind the counter was reading a book. Being an avid reader himself, Dr. Smith asked this man what he was reading. The man was embarrassed and tried to avoid the question. Finally, he said, This book cost me $50. This thin little book. Moreover, I had to make a statement to the United States government that I was researching Hinduism before I could even get into the country. It was with reluctance that he let Dr. Smith see the volume, a book of photographs of Hindu temple carvings with accompanying explanations. The pictures were so vile and the explanations so obscene that the United States government at the time would not allow the book to be brought into the country without a sworn statement that it was indeed for research. It was a religious book, 
but it was so obscene and pornographic that it was built one illustration on how man has gone aside. Two, man's total defilement. They are all together become filthy. The word filthy means tainted. Sometimes my wife will open the refrigerator and say, I think there's something bad in there. And she'll find a piece of, and, and think there's something bad in there. And she'll find a piece of leftover meat and has become tainted. It gives a bad smell. God knows we are all tainted, guilty of departure and total defilement. There is none that does good, no, not one. Some years ago, a doctor friend came to the home Bible class I taught. He was a decent, cultured, and educated individual. However, he had been raised in a godless home and knew nothing of spiritual things. One night, he took the exception to teaching regarding lost condition and inability to do anything good enough for God. He became angry. He refused to believe that the Bible said what he, that he was not a good man. I'm not. I'm doing the best I can, he said. I don't see how God can expect any more of that. Robert, I said, you are condemned by your own religion. You... Say you are doing your best, but that's not really true. Think of the last time you gave a few dollars to charity. You sh could have given 10 times as much. You did not do your best at all. All you did was give a tip to get a, ca a, a canvasier off your back. There was never been a time when if you had tried a little harder, you could have done more. He did not like that, but he, long afterward, he saw the truth and became a Christian. There is none that does good. God's standards are obsolete. The only person who has ever lived who is truly good, whose, whose life would be summed up in the statement of one of his best friends, he went about doing good, was Jesus. He alone lived a truly good life, and he is arrested, was given a mock trial by three human courts, and was crucified on Golgotha's hill. So tomorrow we'll finish the Salmation. I'm running late. You know, guys, we're all guilty before God. That's why one of the reasons why I don't start go out there and start judging people or start attacking other people's sin because it's not wise. We're all, we're all guilty. All of us are guilty before God. You know, they just might, they sin differently, but they need to be born again and receive the Lord just like I did. Same way. By faith through grace. You know, we could all trust the Lord. We could all go to Him. 